With the 16th pick in the 2017 NFL Draft, the Baltimore Ravens select Marlon Humphrey, defensive back from Alabama. So now we begin to see the run on defensive players. Marlon Humphrey, the name sound familiar? It should. He's the son of Bobby Humphrey, who was a first round pick in the Denver Broncos and had a couple of really good seasons before his career was derailed. Obviously, he played pretty well for a team in Hoover High School that didn't lose. He competed in the 110 meter hurdles as a youth, including a silver medalist in the World Youth Championships. And of course, Mel played on those championship teams that are those two teams that went to back-to-back -back championship games for Alabama. What do you see in tape of Marlon Humphrey? Talent. You see athletic ability and you see some recovery speed. 4-4-1 recovery speed. He's over six feet tall. He's nearly 200 pounds. Fits the physical and athletic criteria you want. What he needs to do is locate the ball better. There were some hiccups in coverage at Alabama this year. He had five career interceptions. He's tough as nails. He'll tackle. Nick Saban's the defensive back, defensive guru, so you know complex schemes. He was coaching him up. This year in coverage, he lacks some consistency. I don't think he played up to the level of his talent. But he's got a ton of ability, and he will tackle. You're not playing with 10 guys with Marlon Humphrey. He is a guy who will enforce against the run, will throw that body around. Round. And when he was on top of his game, he looked like a top 10 pick in the first round. But think for the Baltimore Ravens, you had Brandon Carr, you have Jimmy Smith, who's had injury issues, you have Tavon Young, who's a nice fourth round pick. Now you bring in Marlon Humphrey. I'm sure Reuben Foster was tempting with him still being on the board here, but they often said to get depth now at cornerback. With the 17th pick in the 2017 NFL Draft, the Washington Redskins select Jonathan Allen, wow. defensive end, Alabama. Well, there it is. After the long wait for Alabama players to hear their name called, back-to-back -back defensive players from Alabama off the board. Marlon Humphrey to Baltimore, and staying in the beltway, it is Jonathan Allen, the defensive end, out of Alabama going to Washington and close to his hometown of Leesburg, Virginia. You know, if it weren't for the shoulder, you have to think it would have been earlier that he would have come off the board, but his tape is tremendous. Hey, you look at this kid, how can you not like him? He was up in Bristol last week, and what a classy kid. I mean, he's a professional, he's mature, he's a character off the charts. And you watch him, he's scheme versatile. He can play inside as a three technique and get heat on a corner quarterback from up the gut pressure, which quarterbacks hate. He's your three, four end against the run. Pass rush situation, you can kick him inside. This kid comes to play every week. Some of the plays he made this year were highlight film plays. His hand usage, his technique, look at him there, the way he uses his hands, his leverage, his strength. His functional strength with the pads on is outstanding. He's a kid who plays all out all the time. I'm kind of amazed that I thought, yeah, he's second best player. I thought maybe he could drop the nine because of his shoulder, which some teams said wasn't a big concern. Others were a little bit leery of the shoulder. But the bottom line is to get a guy that most thought was one of the best five players in this draft at pick number 17, and it fills a need. And this run on Alabama players that you mentioned, with Baltimore taking Marlon Humphrey and Jonathan Allen to the Redskins, you got O.J. Howard tight end and Reuben Foster inside linebacker. They're going to come off the board pretty soon, Lou. Yeah, these are, look, the Washington Redskins right That's now. That's the Superman play. Absolutely have to be giddy about the fact that he fell to them. If this is a guy, you talk about scheme first. He can play the nose. He can play a poor technique. He can play the defensive end in the in in nine technique. He can play He can play just about anything you want him to. And defensive tackle in particular, when you're talking about defensive line, defensive tackle in particular is exactly what the Redskins need. 4.7 yards per rush given up against the run over the past two years. It's worse than the NFL. They have to solidify the middle of this defense. They need to solidify it on the D-line at the linebacker level and at the safety level in the secondary. This is actually a slam dunk pick for them that just fell into their lap. They have to be happier than happy. Well, he's got all the awards for a reason. He's got 45 career tackles for loss, 28 sacks. The only guy in Alabama to have more sacks than Allen is Derek Thomas. And his instincts set him apart. He's been well-trained. This is a surf technique, I call it, where the quarterback is reading him. And he's going to close down the line of scrimmage, and oh, he's going to take the back and the quarterback. Watch him. He's unlocked. It's a little surf technique. He can take the quarterback and the dive, 
And nobody does it better in college football instinctively than Jonathan Allen. He can hold the point of attack, keep Zach Brown, their new linebacker, clean. He can get rid of people with his hand usage, and he has great ability to play a single gap scheme or a two gap scheme. Lewis, he can play inside or outside. Those 28 sacks come from everywhere, and the Redskins desperately need help in the pass rush. I'm shocked he's there at 17. Are you have any concerns about the shoulder? Anybody here have any concerns about the shoulders? Because that seems the only thing that was holding him back here. Well, sure, there's some concern. I mean, that's why he slid, because he's definitely not in his on-field play. But look, as long as you get him through his first contract, you maintain him, you make sure you try and take care of him. And then after that, you just kind of take it as it comes. He's too good of a player to let slide this far so as it is. And at 17, I mean, he's just tremendous, tremendous value. Throwing his character, I mean, it's A+. plus. It's a yeah. slam dunk pick for them. It's slam dunk. NFL draft. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers select O.J. Howard, tight end, Alabama. And the go! run on Bama players Let's has go! begun. Sir, you're very excited, and we are yeah! happy you're very excited that O.J. Howard is now off the board. Three of the last four picks have been Alabama players. Otarius Jabari is what he goes by. 17 straight games with a reception to end his Bama career. He averaged over 15 yards a catch, Mel, at Alabama for his career, despite less than stellar quarterback play. Think, think about a kid, 6'5 and a half, 251 pounds, arm length excellent, 4'5'1 speed, did 22 reps. He's a blocker. He's in line, as I've been saying. I'm amazed. You think about Jameis Winston and the weapon he can be. You got Cameron Great. Now you add a guy like O.J. Howard. He'll help out your running game, and that's still an issue with Doug Martin's suspension, and they can add a running back down the line. Keep in mind, 11 of the 12 playoff teams didn't have a first-round running back, so you can find these guys like Jordan Howard for the Bears in the fifth round last year. You look at a guy like O.J. Howard, you know, you like to see him sustain a little better, but I like the blocking because you don't see that of any collegiate tight ends these days. He had two or fewer receptions in seven of 12 regular season games. Don't blame that on O.J. Howard. Blame it on a coordinator. Late in the year, though, he was targeted more. He had eight catches against A&M, six against Mississippi State, five against Auburn. O.J. Howard was one of the best five to eight players in this draft, and Tampa Bay gets him at 19. Yeah, look, look this guy is a multi-dimensional threat, run and pass. And think about Jameis Winston's pass distribution last year. Of all the passes that he completed, most of them were outside the numbers. In the number 64% completion percentage, which is one of the lowest in the NFL. He'll help that. But more importantly, they need a running game to really help them. And they need a guy at the tight end position that can help them secure the edges and whoever they wind up playing at running back, help him get on the perimeter. You see him here. I saw him at the Senior Bowl. He's a guy who can pass protect. He can handle six technique defensive ends one-on-one -on -one because he's big enough and strong enough to do that. Here, you see this here. You see this block here that springs the, the long touchdown run. He's putting defensive back type small linebackers on their back, man. And this not even to mention what he can do in the passing game. Jameis Winston needs this kind of weapon in the middle of the football field. Great pick by Jason Light, the GM. Down With the 31st pick in the 2017 NFL Draft, the San Francisco 49ers select Reuben Froster, linebacker, Alabama. Well, the long wait is finally over for Reuben Foster. Off the board, Mel, you had him as one of the best players in the draft. Yeah, I dropped him to eight, Trey, and that was after the issue, and he was up there in the top five. When Todd McShay and I did our GM mock draft, I picked him in five for Tennessee. So Reuben Foster is one of the best football players in this draft, no doubt about it. 49ers were picking two at one point in time. You'd have to believe he would have been in their thought process then had it not been for the issue. Now they get him near the end of round one. I looked at Ray Lewis in college at 220 to 225. Ruben Foster's bat, 228 to 230 pounds. He will get a little bigger. He is all over the field. Blows plays up. Talk about a defensive leader. Talk about Reggie Ragland was there two years ago, yet the guy that was really studying that defense was Ruben Foster. Nick Saban trusted him. All he did was go out there every down and make plays. He's an every down linebacker. He's not going to come off the field. To me, if he can obviously stay focused on the job at hand, stay healthy, be durable, which was a concern going in, heck of a player. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Reuben Foster was fun to watch. He will be an immediate hole filler and a steal if everything really works out in terms of him just getting the job done on the football field, maximizing all that ability. Well, there you see Reuben finally searing his name off the board. Keep in mind, Foster's the first linebacker drafted by the Niners in the first round since Patrick Willis won 11th overall in 2007. 
And that worked out as Willis turned out to be a seven-time Pro Bowler and a leader on that defense that fell just a little bit short in Super Bowl 47. Reuben Foster finally...